This video introduces you to the Green Shoots injection system for treating an invasive knotweed. This is part one. It is intended to help you decide whether to use stem injection to treat a stand of knotweed. Part two addresses how to do the injections. Glyphosate herbicide is typically used for injections. Glyphosate is effective against invasive knotweed and is relatively easy for the general consumer to use. For injections, you will need a concentrate with at least 41% active ingredient. For aquatic sites, you will need to use an aquatic herbicide which has 54% active ingredient. When does stem injection work best? Stem injection is one of the simplest ways to do a treatment on invasive knotweed. There is no mixing. You use the herbicide concentrate without diluting it. There's very little guesswork on how much to apply and where to apply it. You set the dosage and inject that amount in the stem. In addition, other application methods require a rain-free period after application. Although herbicide labels may say, for example, rain fast in two hours, it's a good thing if it doesn't rain for a day or even a few days after an application to foliage. In certain parts of the United States, such as the Pacific Northwest, however, late autumn, a prime time for treatment can be rainy. Finding a treatment window can prove difficult. Because injections put the herbicide in the hollow stem protected from rain, rain is not much of a problem. Injections aren't affected by wind like spray applications are. Finally, in my experience, injections work great in drought conditions. In contrast, foliar applications likely will perform worse during droughts. Research indicates that droughts may thicken the plant cuticle to limit water loss from foliage. A thicker cuticle makes it more difficult for foliar applied herbicides to penetrate. Why do I say that drought appears to improve the effectiveness of injections? I found this out by accident. I treated a small corner of the plot shown here with injections at the beginning of a drought. The treated part is inside the triangle. Over subsequent months, that drought continued. When I checked back in October of that year, all of the treated stems in the triangular area had died. The green stems you see on the left are wild grapevine. What was surprising is that the knotweed stems outside the treated area were also affected. These stems are in the area identified as untreated but affected stems. For example, this clump was one of the untreated but dead clumps. Some of the stems that died were as far as eight feet from the injected ones. Although I can't prove this, it seems highly likely that glyphosate was translocated from the injected stems to the untreated ones and killed them. My hypothesis is that the drought encouraged this transfer of liquid, including the injected glyphosate, from the treated stems to the untreated ones. Therefore, if you have a plot of invasive knotweed and you are experiencing a drought, consider doing an injection. What are the potential disadvantages of injection? First, injections are generally not well suited for large sites. Injections are time consuming and can involve a lot of stooping. Foliar applied herbicides are much better suited for large sites. For large sites, use a foliar spray of some kind. Shown in the photo is an application of foam herbicide. This will be much faster. It's also just as effective. Second, you can't inject every knotweed stem. Injections don't work on stems under a half inch in diameter. The stems will split and regardless, small stems have very little hollow space to hold the herbicide. Therefore, you have to use another method to treat stems under one half inch. One of the alternatives to injecting is what I call the direct application of herbicides to foliage. Foam wiping is an example of a direct application method. Third, injection uses a lot of herbicide. This chart shows the approximate amounts of active ingredients used with different techniques to treat a large stem. It is based on published studies and my work and calculations. Now I have not seen evidence that these high application rates lead to excessive non-target harm. I have only seen one well-documented report of damage to non-target plants from injection. 
This was research conducted by Tim Miller at Washington State, who found salmonberry affected by invasive knotweed injections in trials conducted in 2007. However, he also found non-target harm caused by foliar wiping, although the damage from foliar wiping was about half as much. Before you buy the injection equipment and herbicide, you should do some planning. First, consider mapping your site. This may be unnecessary if you have a small plot in a single location. If, however, you have multiple patches, you may want to map them. One easy way to do this is to use an online mapping program like Google Maps. Take a screenshot of the area, the backyard of your house, for example. The screenshot will probably be best at maximum zoom. Then paste the image into a computer drawing program. Next, outline the major features such as buildings and the knotweed patch. I would also include any nearby desirable plants such as shrubs or trees. Once you have outlined all the key features, delete the screenshot and you'll be left with a simple map like the one shown above. The next thing you'll need to do is figure out how much herbicide you will need. First, calculate the square footage of your stand. If you have an odd shaped stand, break the stand into smaller rectangles as shown here. The stand shown in this drawing has an irregular shape. Four separate measurements are used to come up with a pretty good estimate of 47 square feet. This is the equation for calculating the amount of 41% concentrate you will need to buy. I suggest you take a screenshot of this image and use it as your worksheet. This formula assumes two knotweed stems per square foot. If you have an excep exceptionally sunny location, the density could be higher. If you have a small plot, you can probably count the stems and estimate more precisely the amount of herbicide you'll need. To use this equation, just plug in the square footage of your plot. In our example, we measured a total of 47 square feet. Multiply this times 8 milliliters and you'll get 376 milliliters. There are about 30 milliliters to an ounce, so you'll divide 376 by 30 to get 13 ounces. That's the amount you'll need for the injections. However, you will also want some herbicide for follow-up treatments and for small stems. According to the formula for injections and follow-up, you would need 15 ounces. For this small plot of knotweed, therefore, a 16 ounce bottle of 41% concentrate should be sufficient. The equation for figuring out how much 54% aquatic herbicide you would use is identical, except you multiply the square footage times six milliliters. You do this because since aquatic herbicide is more potent, you will use less of it. Once you have done your calculations, you can buy the materials you will need to do the injection treatment. Also, consider buying our small foam herbicide dispenser and a bottle of blue foaming agent. The small foam herbicide dispenser can be used on the stems that are too small to inject. There also is one other thing you should do long before you do the injections. It's critical. Namely, knock down the dead stems from the previous year's growth. The stems in the photo at left were knocked down. Do this in winter or early spring you don't want to have to navigate through a thicket of dead and green stems like the one on the right. If you knock down the dead stems too late in the year, you may also crack the green stems in the process. If the crack continues to the base of the stem, that cracked green stem cannot be injected. When should you do your injections? The key in terms of timing your injection treatments depends on the flow of carbohydrates, primarily sucrose, between the above ground green foliage and the underground rhizomes. Research indicates that systemic herbicides like glyphosate follow the flow of carbohydrates. In winter, there will be little, if any, carbohydrate movement in the knotweed stand. In spring, the movement will be virtually all from the rhizome into the foliage. This is a bad time to treat knotweed because the applied herbicide may only kill the foliage. It will not affect the underground rhizome 
because the transport of carbohydrates will not be to the rhizome. It's not until about midsummer in a typical year that the stand of knotweed will start to send significant carbohydrates to the rhizome. Therefore, the best time to inject will be midsummer or fall. I believe fall is best for injections for two reasons. First, the stems will have a longer time to grow and more of the stems will be greater than one half inch in diameter. This will mean you can inject more of the stems. Second, according to research done by Price and colleagues published in 2001, there is a major remobilization of carbohydrates from shoots to rhizomes near the time when shoots die back in the fall. If the herbicide you inject is part of this major remobilization from shoots to rhizomes, that is beneficial. However, if it's not possible to inject in the fall, do it in midsummer. Then follow up with a second application in the fall. That's it for part one on the green shoots stem injection system. If you decide you want to treat your knotweed stand with injections, check out part two, which will show you how to do the injections.